Hi, I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland. You know, as we're designing systems for uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning workloads, having a scale-out parallel file system is critical, as is keeping uh, the, this really kind of expensive environment running at full steam. You don't want anything sitting idle uh, as often as you can. Uh, DDN's EXA is a excellent example of an infrastructure that can do that. I'm going to walk you through some of the aspects of that and some new things that they're doing. Joining me to kind of guide me through that process is Sven Uma. He is the Chief Research Officer at DDN. Sven, thanks for joining us. Thank you, George. So Sven, you know, just uh, stop me when I make a mistake here, but so EXA is, I got that part right, right? Scale out file system, uh, parallel access, so we install a small client on anything that needs to access the data directly, right? Yeah, so we basically the product itself is called ExaScaler, which okay. is the hardware which runs EXA 5, which is the current version number 5 of the okay. file system. So maybe we should add the... Uh, Five there, okay. To the EXA, yeah. But EXA five is a distributed scalable file system that is developed and supported by DDN, okay. In order to support massive parallel workloads, okay. Great. And then, in in the typical, you know, did I draw up a good? Uh, I mean, obviously there'd be a lot more nodes, yes. right? But uh, in in many of these environments, we're going to at least have some nodes that are uh, loaded down with some GPUs and CPUs, and of course memory. And then just not uncommon to have some just CPU only uh, nodes on the network yeah. as well. So we see a pretty significant increase on you know GPU mm -hmm. uh, compute nodes okay. uh, there. There's lots of vendors like Nvidia that build very specialized GPU systems. Right. Many others too. Um, but yeah, there is typically a very significant mm -hmm. mix, very large scale out systems. We run some of the largest systems in the world with our exascalar uh, infrastructure. And so, yeah, you have typically CPU nodes, and then you have GPU nodes in, in modern systems. Okay. So, and in, uh, in, in the version 5, you've done a couple of really interesting things that caught yes. my attention anyways. So, the first problem that I see a lot in these environments is we sort of have the, uh, if you will, the sort of the producers of data up here Correct. that are, you know, they could be IoT devices, they could be sensors, which I guess technically are I IoT devices. They could also be just systems themselves generating, you know, machine data. Um, and, and those systems need to kind of uh, transmit their data into this environment. And so is there, uh, now there's something you're doing now with uh, the new version to make that easier, right? Yes. So these are typically, you know, systems people call like edge devices, for example, right. mm -hmm. producers of lot, uh, lots of data. And you, typically, you don't want to have a distributed file system client running on them. It's far too heavy yeah. for that. So you know, these type of uh, uh, systems, producers, uh, require different access protocols into okay. the system. So uh, we added uh, SMB uh, NFS support uh, into XA version 5. OK, so, that's, so here I would just have my normal yeah. NFS client or correct. SMB client. Yes, correct. All right. And then um, you also added S3 as well, right? Yeah, so we are in the beta phase for S3 by okay. the end of this quarter. Uh, we already added HDFS support as well, which okay. is less for the ingest, but more for the compute side. Okay. So yeah, so S3 support and, okay. and HDFS support are basically the fundamental new additions um, in the upcoming XF5 releases. So then, uh, really what's happening is down here, you've added the, the protocol support for NFS, uh, SMB, S3, and then of course uh, HDFS is in there as well. Correct. All right. Now, one of the things that I see a lot in these environments is, and in, in your guys' systems, is uh, a lot of uh, flash storage, of course, for, sure. for high performance. But these environments can get really big capacity wise. Right. So I, I still see a predominance of. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a fair amount of investment still in hard disk down there too, right? Correct. So another very important feature of XA5 is the capability. So we integrate a, um, a framework called Stratagem. Okay. So Stratagem has uh, pooling support. Okay. So one of the first use cases we add is uh, something called hot tier or hot pools. Okay. So basically you can have a flash tier and you can have a disk tier. And then all new ingested data or the active data set essentially resides on flash, okay. while older, less active data trickles down into the stored system. Okay. And that becomes particularly important when we start talking about the GPUs because these systems are very hungry. So you want to have the yes. very active data set in flash, while the colder data typically resides down in an HED tier. Gotcha. Okay. Well, you know, while we're talking about GPUs, I know there's something else that's interesting. So let's let's kind of set that up first, though. So in 
in a normal operating mode, right? I, I, what happens if this is uh, this client here or this node is uh, requesting data is data will traverse up through into the network card into RAM, then to the CPU, then back down to the GPU, and that sort of an inefficient path. And, yeah. and then you guys now have done something. I, I kind of want to know how you did this, but now if I got it right, what you're doing is you're going up into RAM and then directly to the GPU, and that's got to really improve performance. No, no, actually, in fact, we even skipped the RAM part of it. Oh, okay. So, so what we're basically doing, or what was done before, is the CPU was fully integrated into the entire orchestration part as well as handling the data itself. Right. So right now, the CPU is essentially only involved to set up two endpoints, exactly between the Exa system and the GPU direct, and okay. so we essentially RDMA directly over the network adapter into the GPU's memory itself. So okay, we're so bypassing let's, let's memory. That. So we're so bypassing right memory there. and CPU directly. Uh, and CPU directly. Essentially. Wow. Okay. So what's the? I mean, I, I would assume the impact to that is probably a little bit lower latency and things like that. Have you seen any like uh, multiples in, in real world workloads? Yeah. So we actually demonstrated um, a benchmark quite recently uh, with a very significant, um, you know, large data set where we basically ingest the data from an Exa system, or actually a GPU system was reading data out of an Exa 5 system. And uh, when you hit somewhere around 40 gigabytes per second, which is a pretty impressive number for a single client, sure. you basically hit limitations in memory and, and the CPU involvement sure. itself. So by taking out the memory and the CPU on the data pass and basically reading the data directly into the GPU, we were basically able to double it. There is lots of other workloads where we see even higher improvements in performance. But the doubling of the bandwidth is something very important to keep these GPUs at very, very high utilization levels all the time. Well, and as we were talking earlier, I mean, these, these things can cost $8,000 each, and you can have multiples, like 16 of them, in a yes. system, right? Yeah. So that, yeah. that adds up really fast. Yes, that's correct. So yeah. to keep, you want to, whatever you're putting in there, you want to make sure they're real busy. Correct. And, and my assumption is if you can help customers keep those GPUs busy, they might need less of them and then start to really see a significant savings, right? Yeah, you definitely, when you have the utilization higher, obviously you need less of it. Right. But we still see, you know, such an increased amount of demand for GPUs, and, and also that's why it's driving lots of uh, acquisitions also on the storage layer as well, because it's an ever, you know, growing right. industry. I guess it's the drive to get the answer faster, right? Right, but that's the whole point. So getting this up and running in a short period of time. By the way, we deployed the system uh, just last week, a customer put a PO in for getting a very large scale system. So we were able to get a system combined with GPUs up and running in around four hours wow. that delivered 400 gigabytes per second into a GPU cluster, basically very fast. That's, That's very good. impressive. Yeah. So the hey, one of the things I'm, I'm seeing now is with, with this uh, architecture is this really can be sort of your, your central hub for lack of a better word, at least from a storage infrastructure right. perspective, for your uh, environment. I don't need to go out and buy a, a separate stack of storage. You guys can really consolidate a lot, right? Correct. So now that we not just have a distributed file system, but be able to participate in a much larger workflow where sensory data and things that can't have a, a client installed on it, right. there is also vendors that don't allow you to install software sure. on, you know, like microscopes, for example. Yeah. It's, it's exactly the same problem. So that's why we added multiple protocol support into XA5, so we will be able to have an end-to-end -end workflow from wherever the data gets created into the analytics part, generating the outputs, it, and so that as the fastest possible way. Okay, great. So I, I think that's a great um, infrastructure, Sven. Give me some like real-world use cases you're seeing people deploy this architecture. Yeah, it's image recognition, you know, people that build autonomous cars. Uh, mm -hmm. It's for validation. It's for multiple different processes. Uh -huh. Cars sense lots of data, sensory data. Sure. You want to feed it into a system, be able to analyze it at a, at a very high rate. Uh, there is a lot in the medical space. Uh, MRI analyzes it, lots of different use cases. Okay. Yeah, so anything that has a, a large data set that needs to Correct. be processed really fast. Yes, basically. agree. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for helping me out today. Thanks. So there you have it. If you're into the uh, AI machine learning type of work uh, workflows and you're looking to build an infrastructure that can do uh, much of your storage uh, management tasks, uh, EXA is a great uh, place to start. I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.